Hello everyone, I'm Tony Damien. And I'm Andrew Rich and welcome to the latest episode of Himalayan Bites. And today we are fortunate to be joined by our competition partner, Sarah Bembo, who is here to tell us all about the much talked about proposed changes to Australia's competition regime. And those changes uh, will look to really transform the way in which M&A deals uh, go through the competition approval process. But Sarah, tell us all about it. What are these proposed changes? Thanks, Tony and Andrew. So as you mentioned, there are very significant changes that the ACCC has proposed to our merger control regime in Australia. And as we all know and appreciate at the moment, we have a voluntary merger control regime in Australia, which means that there's no requirement for parties looking to undertake a transaction to notify the ACCC or wait until they've got ACCC clearance before they move to completion of a transaction. The ACCC is proposing reforms which will radically change this process. And in particular, they're looking to implement a mandatory notification and a suspensory merger control regime. So that will mean that in the future, certain transactions will be required to be notified to the ACCC and will need to be suspended before the parties move to completion. And Sarah, is there any indication at the moment exactly where that threshold is going to be set for the, those deals that will need to be notified and those that will not? We don't know yet, Andrew. Um, the ACCC hasn't made public their proposal for the level of the thresholds or what the thresholds might look like. Um, these sorts of regimes are fairly common overseas. And what we see in other jurisdictions is a combination of thresholds based on domestic sales and revenue or the value of domestic assets or even in some jurisdictions, the value of the transaction itself. So the ACCC will no doubt be looking at what is used overseas, and we know that they have been consulting with the government around where they'd like to see these thresholds. I think an important thing from our perspective is that it will be critical that these thresholds are set with sufficient materiality so that they don't over-capture transactions and over-regulate transactions that are really unlikely to cause any competition concerns in Australia. Yeah, and that's an interesting point. So is, maybe this is wrong, maybe this is right, you tell me. So there'll be a threshold, if you're on the wrong side of that threshold, you've got to notify that's just going to be mandatory, but if you're not, then all good, or is there more to it than that? It's a good question. And what the ACCC has proposed is that there will also be a waiver process. So transactions that are caught by the thresholds but don't necessarily raise competition concerns in Australia could apply for a waiver and that that would be a short form clearance process compared to what might happen for more complex mergers. And that sort of process is used overseas as well in short form or shorter form notification processes. And the critical thing I think there will be to make sure that the ACCC um, sets the process requirements, what the merger parties are required to do to apply for a, a waiver and how that process runs and how quickly it runs in a way that ensures those types of transactions can be dealt with efficiently and, we and without a disproportionate burden in terms of time and resources from the merger parties. Okay. And so if I've got something and it clears the threshold and there are some competition issues, I have to notify the ACCC under this proposed regime. Sarah, what, what happens then? What is the test? Does the ACCC have to prove there's a problem here? Do I have to prove there's not a problem? How does the, uh, the substantive part of all of this work under this proposed new regime? So the ACCC has proposed both procedural changes in the way we've talked about, so that the re regime becomes both mandatory and suspensory in certain circumstances. But as you've alluded to, Tony, the ACCC has also proposed fairly significant changes to the substantive test for when they will actually clear those mergers. So at the moment, um, the test under the Competition and Consumer Act is that Mergers are prohibited if they are likely to have the effect of substantially lessening competition in Australia. That will still remain the test, but the ACCC has proposed that the law includes particular factors that must be taken into account when that test is applied. 
And the reason the ACCC has proposed those changes is it has felt for some time, and this was um, something that was raised by the former chair, Rod Sims, that this merger test isn't necessarily fit for purpose and that the ACCC is unable to oppose certain transactions that could have a substantial effect, such as transactions which remove a nascent but potentially significant competitor from the market, or transactions where parties engage in a series of what the ACCC refers to as creeping acquisitions. So acquisitions that on their own may not raise competition concerns, but are part of a broader series that the ACCC may be concerned about. So the changes to that substantive test include requiring that the ACCC takes into account whether the transaction extends or increases an already significant market position, or taking into account whether or not it might remove significant potential competition in the future. So that is something that is likely to change in the way the ACCC applies the test in the future. A more significant change is also the way in which the ACCC considers mergers and the decision needs to be made. So Tony and Andrew, you, you'll be aware that presently the ACCC itself cannot prohibit transactions. Only the federal court has that jurisdiction um, unless parties choose to go through the merger authorization process. But under our informal clearance process, which is the process commonly used by most merger parties seeking ACCC clearance, the ultimate decision lies with the federal court. So if the ACCC decides that it wants to stop a merger um, or unwind a transaction that's already happened, it actually needs to take proceedings against the parties in the federal court. The ACCC has proposed that this will change so that they will make the decision under the formal clearance process as to whether or not a transaction can proceed um, and that the ACCC will need to be positively satisfied when taking that decision that the transaction will not substantially lessen competition. And the ACCC sees this as quite, quite uh, significant. They see this as really um, reconfiguring how mergers are assessed in Australia. Uh, the chair's view is that currently, um, because of the fact that the ACCC needs to go to the federal court to stop a transaction, there is a default position that if there is any uncertainty around the competitive effects of a transaction, the ACCC will clear that transaction. And what the chair has proposed is that the risk is shifted to the merger parties so that unless the ACCC is positively satisfied that there will be no substantial impact on competition, the default position will be not to clear the transaction. I mean, that sounds, Andrew, that sounds like that's a, that's a big change. Very, very big change. Sarah, in some respects, it reminds me uh, of what we saw uh, during COVID when the government decided to re reduce all of the FERB approval thresholds or the FERB filing thresholds to zero. And as, as a result of that, we saw a huge backlog um, of, of transactions sitting with FERB and we saw significant blowouts in deal timetables. Is there any expectation that that might happen as a result of these reforms? Andrew, I think it's certainly the case that we expect the merger clearance process will um, involve more time and more commitment from merger parties and will result in increased burdens for some parties looking to seek ACCC clearance. The chair of the ACCC has said that they still expect the overwhelming majority of cases that come before them to be cleared through the waiver process, so something that is more akin, akin to what we see in terms of the ACCC's shorter form pre-assessment at the moment. So there's certainly an indication from the ACCC that they want to be able to process transactions that are unlikely to raise material competition issues in a short time frame. But from our perspective, that will really depend on the details what's required from the merger parties up front, including when they're seeking a waiver, um, how long the ACCC takes to process these things, and how, the, frankly, the reviews are resourced by the ACCC. I mean, they are, they are important reforms, Sarah. If um, there, are, there were some things you'd say to the government, please get these right, please do this, please don't do this, to make sure that the reforms are workable for everyone, so that's merger parties as well as the commission, are there one or two things there that you would throw into the mix? Absolutely, Tony. I think 
We are, as I've mentioned, very concerned to see that the thresholds are set at a level that doesn't overcapture transactions. The information requirements, it'll be important that those aren't overly burdensome so that parties are held up from starting the review process with the ACCC um, in a, for reasons that are not necessarily significant. Um, as you've mentioned, making sure the ACCC is sufficiently resourced and can move to look at transactions caught by the regime, regime quickly will be important. And Tony, another feature that's getting quite a lot of attention is that the ACCC is proposing to have the power to call in transactions even where they don't actually meet the thresholds. That's not an uncommon feature of many overseas merger control regimes, but the important thing will be to ensure that there's some degree of certainty for merger parties around when transactions might be called in by the ACCC. And we would hope to see some sort of guidance um, coming from the ACCC or from government around when they expect the ACCC might exercise this type of call-in power. Very good, very important points there. Hopefully get those fed into the mix. Yeah, Sarah, thank you so much. There's obviously lots and lots of change ahead. I appreciate there's no yet no set legislative timetable for all of that, but it is something that as deal practitioners, we all need to be absolutely aware of. So thank you very much for sharing those uh, valuable insights with us and our viewers. Thanks, Andrew and Tony. And, and as you say, there's no set timetable in terms of next steps. It's still relatively early days. The federal government has indicated that it is broadly supportive of these types of reforms. So we'll be keeping a close eye and talking to our clients about how this progresses and what it might mean for their deals in the future. Sarah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And thank you everyone for watching in our next episode. And this will be an absolute cracker. We will be talking to Maria Leftakis, the Asia Pacific Chairman of Moro Sadali, also known as the Vote Whisperer. Thanks for watching. Thank you.